this video will be a little different and shorter than usual. Today, I am announcing the world's first chatbot focused on success factors employee central. Woohoo! I'll detail what the chatbot knows, do a quick demo, and then tell you how you can access for yourself, all after the intro. So if you're interested in this video, I'm going to assume you probably know what ChatGPT is. So I won't spend any time explaining. You'll find plenty of places around the web to do that for you. What you may not be aware of though, is that OpenAI has provided the ability to build out your own GPTs. You give it a basic set of instructions on what it is supposed to do, but what it makes it unique is it goes beyond just general knowledge. You actually can feed it specific documentation which comes into play when it comes to Employee Central, which I did. I fed it the following information, all Employee Central implementation guides, all relevant platform implementation guides, all implementation guides for EC2 SAP integration, all EC data migration and core hybrid implementation design principles, all uh, relevant architectural leading practices, all EC blogs from 2022 onwards. I guess I could have tried to load the KBAs, but considering there are currently about 85 of them in existence, I left that alone for now. So now let me introduce Corey GPT. Uh, as you probably gathered by the documents I've fed it, this particular GPT is focused on core hybrid uh, implementations. I uh, may do a separate one that handles employee central payroll uh, implementations, but I figured I shouldn't feed both as Corey might get confused and provide conflicting advice. But it should also be uh, something that would work really well if you're just doing an EC implementation without an SAP HR background. So enough said, now let's do a quick demo. Corey, Corey hybrid now. And you can see I have a little symbol here and I actually created that symbol by saying, give me a cloud and a server and put that into Dolly, which is part of chat GPT. And that's what it came up with, which I think is cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed it some questions that I have fed it previously. See if I get the same results. It does learn over time. I have been feeding some more documents in. So let's see how this goes. So I'm hoping to show both some good answers and some bad answers, just so that you can know that it's not, that this does not work perfectly yet. But as you'll see, it still will give you a good general idea about a lot of things. So the first question I'm going to ask it is, and for those of you that are not familiar with Employee Central, my, my apologies, but this, this is going to be very EC specific. So, and I'm going to be asking it some somewhat technical questions that just go beyond general knowledge knowledge that you might pick up from, from very simple materials. So the first question I'm going to ask is one that's a kind of a common misconception, and that is, what is position reclassification? So let's see what Corey Core Hybrid comes up with. Now I am going to, whatever it comes up with, I'm just going to summarize it for you. You can do a screen capture or whatever, pause if you're wanting to see for yourself but I, I don't want to necessarily read through the entire response, but I'll give you an idea of whether I think it's actually good or not. So this first one, looking at it, it actually looks like it's even gotten better than the last time that I provided this prompt. And so you can see here, it does go through what is exactly position reclassification. And it talks about follow-up activity, synchronization rules, triggers for reclassification, basically changing changes in job information, such as a new job or department, the process is just, Yes. And so this very last sentence is really where it, it nails it. So this first sen the sentence before probably isn't clear, but quite frankly, a lot of the documentation that is out there sometimes is not really clear on this subject. So the Corey Hi core hybrid may be suffering from that, but this really this last sentence is where it does nail it, which is says the synchronization ensures that the relevant job information changes are accurately reflected in the position object. And then it kind of details out some diff different pieces of the position reclassification. So the next question I'm going to ask it is what is workflow derivation? And let's see how it does this time. Yep, 
this one looks pretty good. It it describes workflow derivation, how it works. It talks about the uh, business rules, the on save rules, and then how that all should work together. So I'm going to give that one pretty much a, a B or maybe even an A because I don't see anything inaccurate in there. So now I'm going to feed it a, a question that I asked before, and this one is really obscure for those of you that aren't real familiar with Employee Central, but it's actually one where there's been a little bit of debate over the years, but now there is an official best practice, and that is for, for job information, should I use multiple rules for event derivation or just one? And so I'm going to go through this here. The answer is now, according to the best practice documents, that you should only use one rule for event derivation. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. Oh, wow. It's actually learned from this. First time I asked, I asked it this, it did come back and tell me that I should use multiple rules, but this time it is learned probably from some of the other documents or maybe from a previous chat that I've had with it that for managing employee central core hybrid, it is recommended to, to configure only one uh, event reason derivation scenario based on the rules for job or uh, comp information. So that, that to me is definitely some progress. Let's move on and let's do another question that I had. Again, since we, since this one is specifically for core hybrid, and again, what core hybrid is, that means that you're using Employee Central as your front end with an SAP HR back end. So uh, now I'm just going to ask ChatGPT to define that for us. So what does core hybrid mean? Yes, this one talks about moving. Yes, this is a pretty good summation. And it also hits on the fact that you not only move employee data, but also organizational data as well. The last one I'm going to, I'm going to ask it is another one. This one, actually, it got right the first time. But this is also a very specific question, which is for core hybrid, how do you represent employee group and employee subgroup and employee central? Because the official guidance in the implementation design principle is that we should actually use custom MDF objects for it. This differs for, from the way that it's supposed to work in EC payroll, where you use employee class and employment type. So now let's see if chat GPT gets this one right again. Let's see here. Yep, you can see here, the second part is what I was looking for, which is custom MDFs is what it's saying that should be used for this. So again, another good answer. Now, what one thing I probably should have mentioned up front is these documents that I fed into ChatGPT, they are not readily available from a indexing of the web. You have to be able to, you have to have specific logins in, in, in order to get to these documents. So that's what makes the GPT, these individual GPTs that much more compelling because it means that you can feed it very specific information and have it and have the GPT work off of that. So, all right, so now let's switch back over and I will wrap up, which includes telling you how to access this GPT for yourself. I hope that you can see that while Corey is not perfect, he is a pretty compelling vision for the future. It's definitely possible that one day soon, SAP could easily build and release a GPT once a month that represented all of the latest documentation and best practices. I think that'd be pretty cool. What is great about these GPTs is that I believe you should be able to make it learn and forget, which is important, the forgetting part, because technology should be changing. Can you try out, Corey? Absolutely. All you need to have is an open AI account. You can easily sign up and it's free. I'm posting a link to access the GPT in the description below. My only request is that you post your experiences with it, good and bad, in the comments below this video. So please try it out for yourself and let me know how it goes. Thanks a lot.